And of course, then, then it was in uh, all the, the media in Michigan, Ohio, and well, in the country. But in Ohio, the bishops of Ohio reacted uh, so quickly. Uh, I, uh, they must have called the papal nuncio that night. <laughs> and and, and, and you know, here's the thing uh, that's strange, because I, by that time, you know, I'm, I'm a bishop already 30 years at least, and I know all these people, and I've met with them many times, you know, the regional meetings, the national meetings, not one of them called me up to talk to me about it. You know, if they were angry, they could call me up and holler at me, scream at me if they wanted or, but one of them said, well, why did you do it? Not one. And not one bishop from across the whole country ever said a word to me about it uh, in any kind of personal way. They reacted against it very publicly because within a matter of days, um, I, I don't know how long it took, but less than a week, um, Archbishop Maida, Carver Deer had died in the meantime, but he was told Maida was the Archbishop. <coughs> he calls me up and he says, I have a letter from the Papal Nuncio that I have to share with you. I said, oh, okay. Uh, I didn't realize that they had called the Nuncio, but obviously they did. And the Nuncio had actually contacted Cardinal Giovanni Ray from the Congregation for Bishops in Rome. And so the letter that came from the nuncio to Maida, and then shared with me, again, this was so strange, the way the church operates. You would think they might treat you like an adult who call you up or send you the letter and deal with you, but they don't. They go to you know the higher, higher the, the head of the congregation of bishops, to the nuncio, to the archbishop, and then finally the archbishop calls you in like you're a little boy and says, I got this problem, you know, we gotta deal with this. And so that's how it works. Well, the letter from, and, and, and you know, in fact, I never, I, I had some correspondence with congregations in Rome before over various issues that had come up while I was a bishop. And, um, and it always takes a long time. You know, you write a letter, or I mean, they send you something and you have to respond, and so you take a little time to think about it. and. Uh, Finally, you get a letter ready, send it back, and then maybe two or three months later, they might send you another letter, and you know, then you wait two or three months. And so it just takes a long time. Well, in this case, everything happened within a week or at the most 10 days. And not only was the Nuncio notified, but it got to Rome, and Cardinal Ray uh, wrote his, it was a long letter, about two and a half pages or so. And it was a letter outlining the canons of kind of law that I had violated. And I don't remember what all they were because uh, I wouldn't even read the letter. One, uh, in fact, might have didn't even give it to me at first. Um, but uh, the main thing was I had broken a canon which they said um, I violated what in the canon is called the communio episcoporum. Mm -hmm. the, the communion of bishops. They we're all supposed to be together, think together, talk together, you know, one voice. Well, now how can that be? You know, you're in a church of human beings, and there, it can't be. But because I had gone, and, and, and this, they may seem to be a huge problem. I still don't understand why it's such a problem. But I had left the Archdiocese of Detroit and gone to another diocese in fact, into another state and, and another province of, of diocese to do this testimony. Well, evidently, you know, if you're in Detroit, you're supposed to just stay in Detroit, not try to work in the church, even though when you're ordained bishop, you're ordained part of what they call the College of Bishops. And so you're not just a bishop for one diocese, you're a bishop within the college that is the, uh, well, in, in our theology, the bishops are the overseers for the whole church. And so this was, a, from their point of view, a major crime that I committed. And so they demanded and, uh, that I resign immediately 
as a bishop and also resigned my parish where I was. I had been a parish, pastor of a parish in the inner city of Detroit by my own choice. I didn't have to be a pastor because I was doing administrative work, but I wanted to be, and I was always, almost always a pastor. 